So, I have a laptop here, Dell Precision 5510, and it has USB-C, which is Thunderbolt equipped. So, the interface is USB-C, but it has the ability to connect to devices like this external monitor over Thunderbolt, which are also powered by that same single cable. So, here we go. It's an MB169C+, 15.6 inch TFT, 1920-1080. Oh, let's give this a try. Should be plug and play and just plug it in and use it. Nice packaging. What else is in here? Okay, a case. I guess we'll start with the case. Velcro. So yeah, for traveling, you don't want to put the screen in somewhere in your luggage and uh, that would be a way to protect it a little bit. So let's get into the device itself here. Directions say to plug it in. Uh, but there is some sort of power switch. Looks like these directions are sealed. Yeah, I'll just leave in the bag. I'll make sure this thing works first. Instructions in a bag. Another set of instructions, sorry. Cable in a bag. Well, that I'm going to need. So, uh, everything's in sealed plastic it would seem for this product. That is a rather long cable. Could be good or bad. Uh, I have a, let's see, I have an 18 inch one of these around too. I'll probably use that. All right, here we go. Remarkably light. Feels like a, feels like a third of the weight of a laptop or, or a yoga or something. So, so I'm impressed with the very light weight. And there we go. Let's get the camera nice and close. We've got a fancy set of marketing sticker stuff. Asus logo, or Asus, depending on how you like to say it. USB C is being bragged about there. And I'm not actually sure if uh, I see the Thunderbolt logo anywhere, so it could just be USB-C. Um, okay, it was made in February 2017. Brushed spiral pattern there. Looks very nice from the back. And on the edge we do have, I don't know if focus going, power. So power up, power down, and some sort of volume-like rocker. And then the USB connector itself. Nothing else to look at on any of the other edges. So I'd say it's time to give this a try. All right. USB-C. Connected and USB C connected. Screen flickered. Plug and play sound happened. And I did not hit the power switch yet. But it's acting like it knows the device is there. If I go into display settings on the New build of Windows that came out all of yesterday. Creator update. It looks like it's already mirroring displays. So whether it's on or off, it detects the devices there. Do I have to push and hold this to turn it on? Hmm. Okay. Uh, I feel a little silly now. What did that quick start manual say again? It says to push 
in, I guess. All right. Sure felt like a volume or oh, that's brightness. Okay, so pushing in is going to turn it on. There we go. Ta da! Well, that was easy. So we're currently in clone display mode. How about I try extended display mode? Uh, oh yeah, we have the new night light setting. All right, so duplicate the displays. I'm going to say extend these displays. Keep the changes. And now we can drive from display to display. Now because I'm 4K on the left, that is going to have some size effects. So how about I go with changing the resolution on the left down to 1920-1080. Too bad I hit the wrong thing. There we go, my finger. Literally fat fingered that one. Okay, so now we got same size screens. Two of them next to each other. Which means if I kind of Brighten this up and lean it forward. Let's see, is this brightness? Uh, stickers in the way. We have menu options. Hopefully uh, you can see that pretty well. Hmm. Okay. I'm having trouble navigating that. It's not a touch screen, so it's a combination of up, down, and the rockers. There we go. All right, so let me bring that closer here so you can see it better. Push in to get the menu. Hmm. Okay, bottom of the rocker brings up a blue filter. Top of the rocker brings up that menu. All right. I uh, didn't really need an alignment grid. Hitting X got rid of it. Let's try that again. So. It's a clumsy menuing system, because uh, right here you would think going up and down would do something. <laughs> it doesn't seem to. All right, well, I guess I'm going to have to work on brightness in a bit. Um, what I really just want to show is that we have the same scale, and that's the idea. Basically, I'm in a hotel room. I have two monitors of the same dimensions, and there's nothing wonky about moving between the two. It should just work. Let's try that. Resize this. And there you go. Whoa. Okay, we've got a sizing issue on the right. So window scaling is in effect here. So time to head back to... Mouse here. All right, so display settings. Yep. So scaling is our problem there. If we go over to this screen, now we can see... On this monitor, it's going to say 200, uh, 200, okay, one. So there's a problem. And now, perfect. Everything's good. Let me bring the uh, exposure down a little. So, I now have a very nice setup for when I'm on the road, I won't feel so much like I am roughing it. And the dimensions are almost identical. The Dell Precision 5510 on the left with the 4K screen looks like it's a little taller. Okay, the sticker is probably driving you nuts too, so let me just take that off. And there we go. So. The dimensions here, if you can see them, um, let me brighten it up again. The lit area, ever so slightly lower here. So the screens are 
very, very close to the same, but not quite identical. Probably within 5% of each other. So you can see the misalignment up here, but down at the bottom, uh, it's pretty much a perfect alignment. Okay, so they're slightly different sized. Anyhow, this looks very good to me. Uh, just got to figure out that brightness now. Change brightness and color. Night mode is now off. If we do the brightness on the laptop, it's only going to change the screen on the left. So that makes some sense. So yeah, looks like we're pretty much faced with having to use those clumsy menus to get the brightness changed. So let's try that again. Push in to get the menu up. How about I just push up and see what happens. Okay, now it's working. So that's our blue filter. So as you would expect, I was able to scroll through it. At this menu, I don't really see anything about brightness. Let's go into this menu. Okay, that's a little weird. All right, well, that's a wrap on this segment of video. I'll go ahead and record another clip once I figure out how to set brightness on the right. Yeah, there's definitely more to cover here. We've got the tent mode of that carrying case that I don't want to do instead of using a box like you saw me do. And also point out that I did figure out the menuing. I haven't changed the brightness yet, but basically you tap this twice. I didn't see any that anywhere on the quick start guide, but now we got into a sub menu. And now things start to make sense. Pushing in, push in again. And do not use the top and bottom volume. Let's try that again. Push twice. Go down. In. And once you get to the sub menu, stick with that controller. All right, it's as bright as it's going to go. If you hit the X, which is the top of the rocker, it just goes away. So twice. Quick look at the menus, color, temp, smart view, vivid, trace view, game mode, splendid demo mode. Um, theater, dark, game mode looks a little wonky, RGB mode, reading mode, dark room mode. Seems like standard is what I want. All right, how are we doing on brightness now? Comparing the two. Sorry about the back reflections. All right, so now we got two white screens. Yeah, very similar. Let's get the exposure of the camera down. I'd say we're doing all right here. So now it's time to figure out the tent. And that would be in this quick start guide. So, if we're just carrying it, it's got a very rubbery back. So even though it looks like stainless steel, uh, it's got a rubbery feel. Is that a covering that I peel off? Apparently no. So getting some fingerprinty action going already, but for the most part I think it hides the fingerprints at most viewing angles. Front is not a touch screen, don't really want your fingerprints on it. All right. So, for travel, probably I guess, uh, okay. Just like this. Nope. It's pretty tight. And it's saying to this 
over. Okay, that becomes the back. So we've got three triangles of Velcro here and Velcro here that this adheres to. So that's going to be our tilt angle. All right. Boy, that doesn't really want to hold like that. And they're showing the display somehow holding onto there. So this is what they're saying to do. But obviously something's wrong if it's not going to just hang out in place. So if we fold this up and out, now we put the monitor there and we have ourselves a monitor stand in our hotel room or wherever. So that's the extent of that. Wasn't too hard. I see a power light went on and the screen, the screen went on. Okay. But uh, good. Didn't have to do anything. So once that initial power on I did by pushing in pretty hard on this, uh, it seems to have remembered that setting. A little tricky that this is here because of course it touches your screen next to it. So if we're going to do side by side, we probably want to reverse the positions here. But that's not always going to work out because of the way your you know, hotel desk is or what your preference or whatever. But uh, now the cable is not obstructed. So thanks for watching and for visiting takertry.com.